Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the medical black book. Our today's topic is torso trauma. This consists of on deadly dozen chest injuries which are classified upon immediately life threatening and potentially life threatening. But before discussing this, we need to know about a condition known as pneumothorax. Pneumothorax means air in the thorax. Now the thorax does not consist upon the mediastinum. It is actually meaning air present between the visceral and the palatal pleura of the lungs. Normally, no air is present here. They, it consists upon about approximately 50 ml of fluid. So if it air gets in, it can get through two sources from either the lung parenchyma or from an external source by a blunt trauma. From the uh, from the lung parenchyma, when the air enters in this space. As this area is a closed area is created, this is known as a closed pneumothorax. The, the air can enter from the lung parenchyma into this space by any condition such as rupture of asthmatic blebs or even pneumonia. It air can get from an external source by any blunt trauma. Now, two types of conditions are caused by it. It can either result in an uh, open pneumothorax in which the air can freely enter the, this space and the external space and the pressure between them are equal. Or what can happen is air can get in the, this area but it cannot go out, creating a tension in this space called, called, called tension pneumothorax. Whenever air gets into the space, this will put pressure on the lungs and resulting it to collapse. Similarly, this is known as pneumothorax. If supposedly blood accumulates in this area due to rupture of any intercostal vessel, this would be termed as a hemothorax. We know what an open pneumothorax is now or what an closed or open pneumothorax is now and intention pneumothorax. Note as in a closed pneumothorax, what this air is basically entrapped. The pleural cavity pressure is Less than the comparatively the atmospheric pressure. Is it an open pneumothorax? The pleural cavity pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. In intention pneumothorax, the pleural cavity pressure is greater than that of the atmospheric pressure. Now we go towards the actual topic, which is the immediately life threatening conditions. The first one is tension pneumothorax. In this, the air is entrapped in the thoracic cavity without any meaning of escape. Before studying this topi topic, you should know what uh, a normal radiograph should look like in order to know abnormality of this condition. So in a normal radiograph, x-rays cannot pass through bones, hence they appear white. They can pass through air, hence that area appears darker. But if there is a large concentration of air in, in this respected area, it will, become, it will look a lot darker. So hence you can diagnose that air is entrapped in this area, so it must be tension pneumothorax. This air gets in by penetrating chest trauma, blunt chest injury, or any hydrogenic chest injury. The presentation of such a patient is basically they can be tachypneic, there will be dyspnea, there will be distension of veins. But for a clear cut diagnosis, an examination should be made. In examination, what we find is as air is entrapped, this air would cause push on the lung and it will lead to collapse of that lung but along that it would also push the mediastinum along with it similarly pushing the trachea towards the opposite side so on palpation what we see is there is tracheal deviation when we auscultate such a patient on this side the breath sounds are absent and when we percuss this area there would be hyper resonance hyper resonance indicates that there is a lot of air present in such an area now treatment of this condition is immediate decompression because this is causing collapse of that lung. So the, uh, in order to reinflate that lung, we need to pop it like a balloon. So this is done by insertion of a large bone needle in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. Now open pneumothorax, this is also known as sucking wound chest. In this what happens is, there is a large defect in the chest, approximately more than 3 cm, leading to equilibrium between the intrathoracic and atmospheric pressure. Now what happens, how do we identify this? This is identified when air enters through such a typical wound, this makes a characteristic sucking sound. 
or as air passes in and out through the pleural cavity bubbling can be seen as the blood is coming out from this wound hence known as the sucking chest wound now how do we treat such an injury we treat such an injury by first closing the defect with a sterile occlusive plastic dressing and now we tape the dressing three ways creating a side to act as a valve now this not this is um, not a definitive treatment but we do this to avoid further collapse of the lung or creating a tension pneumothorax so afterwards what we do is we put a small tube in this area approximately of 28 fg or uh, we can use a larger one in adults after that we wait for the lung to inflate if it infl if it doesn't inflate we induce a pressure of 5 mmg to reinflate it after that we do physiotherapy and active mobilization then our next disease is hemothorax as you already know it is the presence of blood in the pleural space this blood accumulates because of the blunt injury to the torn intercostal vessels or internal mammary artery now no as you know that when x-rays pass through air it will leave a black shadow but if it passes through fluid there would be no no appearance would be gone there would be no opacity there would be uh, uh, there would be this would appear homogeneously white with the rest of the area so this is not this does not mean the lung is missing it actually means that there is fluid accumulating and the x-rays cannot pass through it hence it is appearing in this way as you are losing a lot of blood the body would enter a state of shock in shock what happens is the blood pressure decreases and the your hand and feet and extremities become cold and clammy the neck lines become flat because there is a lot of uh, volume loss on bone examination what we see is there is unilateral breath sounds are present in this area and that, in that area it will obviously be absent on percussion of this area the node will be dull indicating a large presence of fluid so how do we treat it we insert a intercostal drain in this area to prevent uh, that drain would drain all of this fluid and we do this to prevent empyema which is the pus accumulation in this space after whenever there is stasis anywhere there is infection can later be caused resulting in empyema and if you do not treat it after it has been caused this can later result in fibrosis so if blood is lost more than 1500 ml or more than 200 ml per hour over the last 3 hours we need, we need to do an urgent thoracotomy in order to find which vessel is bleeding and to basically stop the bleeding surgically now what is pericardial tamponade it is basically accumulation of blood in the visceral and parietal layer of the heart this layer this is caused by a penetrating trauma and it, the patient presents to us with tachycardia and the most important finding is pericardial tamponade is basically the muffled heart sounds upon chest x-ray we see an enlarged cardiac shadowing because of the increase in the size because of the accumulation of blood and upon ultrasound we see fluid in the heart space for treatments of such disease we need to do a needle pericardiocentesis but as this has a high risk of arterogenic injury hence we do a sternotomy or left thoracotomy now our next disease is flail chest this is a caused by a blunt trauma with multiple fractures now this uh, what happens is the drip cage uh, carries multiple fractures at two points so that point become free and that part move paradoxically with each respiration if it is supposed to move inwards with inspiration it will move outwards and under the expiration as it should move outwards it would move inwards these points can become a potential point for rupturing of the lung parenchyma which can lead to pleural contusion so the treatment of such uh, such condition is first give oxygen administration give analgesics physiotherapy chest tube inside you and then stabilize the uh, the flail chest by surgery then our next most dangerous disease is immediate like threatening disease airway obstruction this can be caused by a hematoma of the pharynx or the larynx as well as airway edema and backward drawing of the tongue the patient will present with stridor choking or cyanosis the treatment depends upon the cause 
on what is the cause if there is a hematoma we need to drain it if, if there is airway edema we need to give patients steroids and if there is backward drawing of the tongue what we can do is we can do a certain maneuver or basically pull it to pull it out and to relieve that stridor then our next is potentially life threatening injuries this includes the thrac the thoracoerotic disruption this is basically caused by automobile as accidents and fall from a great height in this how this area ruptures is because this thoracoerota is fixed to the ligamentum atriosum distal to the origin of subclavian artery upon such incidences this ligament pulls upon itself hence disrupting the thoracic uh, the thoracic aorta this would result in upon examination we can see asymmetry of the upper and lower extremity blood pressure widening of pulse pressure contusion of the chest wall obviously and this uh, this thing can be confirmed by a ct scan treatment of such trauma can be first uh, first is to control the arterial systolic blood pressure we need to decrease it about approximately less than 100 mmg and then what we do is we do endovascular intraaortic stunting after doing that we repair the tear by a dacron graft then our next injury is tracheobronchial injury this presents with subcutaneous emphysema subcutaneous emphysema is basically air present in the sub, uh, soft tissue of the chest so whenever you press the chest there would be crackling sounds heard known as subcutaneous emphysema there would be also respiratory compromise of the patient and we can diagnose this by doing a bronchoscopy treatment of such injuries are intubation of the unaffected bronchus and later followed by operative repair of the injury our third injury is diaphragmatic injury this injury is caused by a penetrating injury below the fifth intercostal space as at that space the diaphragm is present this results in herniation of the abdominal content from the abdominal area from the abdominal area into the thoracic area how do we diagnose it by doing a ct scan of the upper and lower git We can also diagnose this by diagnostic peritoneal lavage or by VAT, which is a video-assisted thoracoscopy, or by laparoscopy. Our next disease, uh, next injury is esophageal injury. Whenever your esophagus is injured, this is present with odynophagia, which is painful swallowing, mediastinal emphysema, pleural effusion, which is the fluid, fluid in the pleural space, and unexplained fever. Now, what do we do? Is we do a esophagogram. and we by putting the patient in the decubitus position this is the decubitus position and then we treat and repair and uh, maybe in the treatment of this esophageal injury is first to repair and then drainage now our next disease is pulmonary contusion this is caused by blunt trauma blunt trauma is basically caused by the flail chest segment or the fractured rib this patient presents with worse than hypoxemia in the first 24 to 48 hours this is confirmed by a ct scan or blood in the endotracheal tube treatment of such a condition is by giving oxygen administration or aggressive pulmonary toilet adequate analgesics and mechanical ventilation our next injury is blunt myocardial injury this is caused by a blunt trauma and the findings of in such a patient is basically abnormal ecg findings our next injury is continuing blood loss if there is blood loss of more than 1500 ml this is termed as a class 3 shock and such a patient can be treated by resuscitation